All right. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. As you know, my name is Kenneth Bocor, your host, and I have a very special guest today. I'm super stoked to have Nicole Kratz on the line here. She's the chief engineer of the Chevrolet Battery Electric Truck Division. How are you, Nicole? I'm great. How are you doing? Thanks Good for thanks. having me here. Well, thanks for being on. Hopefully I pronounced your last name right, because my viewers know I butcher names all the time and, and pronunciations of foreign words. So I try my best. Yes, actually, I think that um, that name came from some sort of Canadian background, according to my husband. So yeah. I think you did great. <laughs> well, you know, we're all part of that melting pot that is we the world, are. right? at some point in time. So again, thanks for, for coming on. Now, I, I, I watched you on another show, and I'm trying to remember if you were part of the CES launch or not, where, where Mary came up. I believe you were. And, you know, especially on the Silverado, that really got a lot of excitement in the industry. I mean, you know, Ford started it with the F-150 last year. You guys are jumping in with, you know, with a, a electrifying a product that is near and dear to GM as well, because we know pickup trucks are super popular, especially here in North America and very valued um, for consumers out there. So my first question before we get into some of the details maybe on the truck for those that don't know about it is I'd like to understand because a lot of my viewers and listeners don't really know, they think, well, you can just kind of put a car on a napkin and build it in a year or something with a few dollars. It's, it's that easy, right? Uh, I mean, look at some of these startups. Can you like, tell me a little bit about how long, how the project development was and, and was and how long and how, what the pro, that process was for the Silverado EV? Right, so um, it's not that easy for sure. We have cut our vehicle development time in almost half um, to do the Silverado EV. And what's important about that is that it doesn't cut corners in terms of quality and safety and the performance of the vehicle. But what it does do is accelerate our decision-making and really focus us on one um, goal and gets rid of a lot of the noise or questions of, should we do this, should we do that? We're very much faster in our decision-making. The way that we as a team work together is very different. It's a much more collaborative environment where um, decisions can be made at much lower levels and we don't have to go through several layers of leadership to make decisions. We're doing it very quickly as a team. And then the last thing I think that helped us with this vehicle in terms of what it takes to develop something quickly is we have a very diverse team, um, uh, male and female, as well as different cultural views, ages. Everyone is bringing something to the table in terms of ideas and innovation. And so no one's ideas are dismissed. And in fact, when we want to make something true, we have a statement that we make that says, what must be true? In other words, what constraints do we need to take off the table to make your idea work? And then we'll go work on how to re resolve the constraints so that we can put the vehicle together. And it's been an amazing journey. The team is really smart. They're very innovative. Uh, we've been developing this truck during COVID. And so what that really means is a lot of um, these interactive video conferencing mm -hmm. and work from home. We've had a lot of um, challenges in terms of learning how to work from home and how to innovate and still as a team pull together. And so there's just so much that has changed in the way that we're doing our work to the positive um, that allows us to make these vehicles um, faster. And then it doesn't help or doesn't hurt that our Ultium structure is really our platform that we're building the vehicle on. And what that allows us to do is do more of a Lego-like approach for flexibility and scale. We have the battery pack, it's designed, it's being developed, and then we can build the vehicle and integrate it on that platform much faster as well. Yeah, I was going to ask you that. It certainly is underpinned by you know, the Altium, and that's really the way to go, you know, that skateboard type platform where you can do so many things with a very simplified platform. I think people who understand all electric vehicles know that in general, you know, there's there's less number of moving parts. Uh, there's the different engineering and design techniques because you're using that platform that you can bring into vehicles that you were probably restrictive before in a similar vehicle in internal combustion manner. So there's a lot of things that you can do, and we'll get into some of that. So beyond uh, so beyond the the ability then to um, use the Altium platform for many different vehicles and many different use cases, what additional value does that platform bring to consumers? Well, certainly. Device 
Developing a battery architecture that's used across various vehicles means that you're not developing something new with every vehicle platform. Mm. So it allows for the cost of ownership, the quality, the reliability, and the durability to all be improved because we're developing something um, once the structure itself is developed, the cell is developed inside of um, the battery structure itself is all developed. And what's changing is the innovation and technology of our cell chemistry, mm -hmm. but that's all interchangeable to the pack as well. And so what that really means for the customer is that as technologies improve and as the cell technology is more capable, we can literally drop in new cell chemistry and we don't need to redesign the entire battery pack. We don't need to redesign the vehicle. We don't need to redesign the structure. It's gonna drop in. And what that means for customers is lower costs as we develop our future, we want to talk about batteries and we want the batteries to be reduced costs. And it also means just less replacement repair and higher quality for our customers as well. Gotcha. All, all pluses for consumers as well as the manufacturers as well. It's a win-win for both of you. Now, if we talk about in designing um, you know, an all-electric version of one of what could be arguably said your, your best-selling vehicles in the Silverado, um, what was your team's thought process in bringing this to market with uh, and taking into mind your existing customer base, which you know fairly intimately, obviously, because truck truck buyers tend to be very loyal. You know, they tend to be one manufacturer loyal for most of the time and and potentially new truck owners in mind. You know, what were some of those guiding principles in this development of the Silverado EV? So we know that the Silverado nameplate means something to um, our customers. And we, first of all, had to make sure that the performance, capability, quality, durability, um, everything that has been come to be known in the Silverado nameplate is designed into this EV pickup truck. And so we're absolutely proud that we have the same capabilities as the Silverado um, ICE pickup truck. What we also did, though, is just reimagine um, being able to put an EV architecture onto the Altium platform means that ICE components can be taken away. So let's put a completely flat floor in the pickup truck and give the customers more console storage. The engine isn't in the engine compartment. And so let's actually reproportion the vehicle and use a frunk still, the, you know, the underhood storage but also take some of that space and make a five foot 11 bed, which is longer than any other EV pickup in the market, as well as some of the crew cab regular box pickups. And the center um, cabin is actually a little bit longer. It allows a six foot passenger to fit comfortably. So the team really sat down and said, how do we make the pickup experience better? And how do we show that this is an EV pickup and not just the um, current Silverado with a bad battery underneath it. That was absolutely our goal. Now, when we talk about customers, we have to, we have to show Silverado pickup truck customers that this is a truck they can consider, they can be confident with, and that they're going to want to own. So over 400 miles of range is important for us. That was one of the things. Mm -hmm. The second thing is versatility and capability of cargo, where you carry it, how you can carry it. And so we designed the mid gate into our vehicle. Mm -hmm. We also are attracting outside pickup owners that may have thought about, like you had just mentioned, maybe, you know, I want to drive a pickup truck. I don't know, but I, now you're enticing me to really consider it. And the enticement comes from having a truck that can do 400 miles of range, but can also have versatility like our mid gate and being able to carry people and cargo. And with rear steer, it steers and handles and drives less like a traditional pickup truck and more capable on the road from that perspective. So we really set out to include our whole entire customer base in considering this vehicle for a purchase. And we're really excited that the um, feedback has been very positive so far. Yeah, you know, I totally agree with everything you said. I, I noticed a lot of those points during the, the launch presentations uh, and trying to visualize myself in those, those seats as an owner or as a per, per, uh, you know, potential buyer. Um, and absolutely, you guys hit, hit it out of the park with this. And and again, for listeners and viewers, I mean, everybody knows I don't have a pickup truck today. I have a, a couple of sedans and a hatchback and a small hatchback, one sedan. So I'm not currently 
right in the market of a pickup truck, but I'm starting to think about maybe my future has one. And I know a ton of people that have put reservations on a cyber truck. Good for you, but I'm not particularly going to be one of those. If I decide to move in that realm, I'm going to look at something a little bit more traditional. And that was asked, I believe uh, I heard a question asked of you on that. So this is, uh, it's not because one of the values that traditional OEMs bring with, with their pickup trucks is that, um, you know, a, a frame on body approach, right? That there's so much versatility to that. Whereas a unibody, there, there, there are some pluses and benefits there from, you know, cost of economies to build, but, and maybe safety elements, but then you don't get that selection customability, customizability that you can. I understand the Silverado is a bit of a mix of these. Is that correct? Yeah. So when we talked about um, reimagining the pickup truck, we actually reimagined what a body architecture would be. Mm -hmm. So it's not the traditional body on frame pickup truck because with our 400 miles of range, we wanted to enable making that Altium platform become part of the structure of the vehicle. And, and so with that, the frames are no longer there. And that frame structure um, for durability, safety, performance, capability, payload, it's integrated into the battery pack. Mm -hmm. We have a body structure that also carries some of the structure of the vehicle. Those two are integrated together with the battery pack and they've created a new category of basically not a bfi not a body frame integral vehicle because that of course means that all the structure is carried in the body in the floor let's just say um, this one carries a lot of the structure in the altium battery as well as in the body structure and what it really means is really great handling and performance capability overall the center of gravity of the vehicle is lowered and so the drive experience the way it envelops the road inputs are just amazing and delightful and everyone that's driven um, our our initial test vehicles have agreed that this is just really offering the customer that next level of refinement in a pickup truck yeah, yeah, not only does, you know, those, those battery packs and, and those type of chassis that you're talking about in the Altium platform provide inherently additional safety features with structural rigidity and integrity, you know, bolting that on to the other uh, core system that you have from a safety and handling element, it really kind of steps it up to that next level. Absolutely correct. And um, obviously with the lower center of gravity that this will, will bring to a, a pickup truck being with, uh, I'm not sure what the, the pack size, I forget what the pack size is in the, in the Silverado, but it's probably going to weigh anywhere from eight to 800 to 1200 pounds. I would imagine something along those lines. That's not uncommon now. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. just how, how some of those characteristics of handling are improved because of that, uh, massive uh, weight, that oh, lower yeah. center of gravity. And then how does that equate to lowering potential risk rollover? Yeah, so a lower center of gravity designed into a vehicle will always um, have a reduced uh, rollover risk. And um, so I, I'm not going to comment specifically on the yeah, Silverado, I but I will say that in general, that design is always better. The, um, the lower center of gravity also enables the better handling and ride characteristics because we're able to focus that energy low, port all of that load, are already managing something that's lower. So you get what we call jounce and rebound. All of that stuff is just better controlled. And as we go into big road inputs, big swells, everything becomes more, um, you know, controlled, I'll just say, in the entire chassis system for, for sake of conversation. Yeah. Um, it also allows with rear steer better handling. So our rear steer, like with a trailer, for example, we've got 10,000 pounds of towing available on our RST model. And the rear steer helps control the trailer at highway speeds. So rear steer isn't just about low speed maneuvers, like having, you know, being able to get into tight uh, parking lot or cornering spaces with only one turn in a pickup truck which is you know pretty hard these days but it also means better trailering dynamics going down the road at higher yeah. speeds which i think people are going to really appreciate when you talk about the level of towing capability that we have in the silverado you know that we've said that we'll have a twenty thousand pound capable silverado ev and so you know we're really serious about making the trailering experience delightful for our customers and not just capable absolutely because that's important you know a lot of people buy pickup trucks for either to pull or tow something or for payloads or and or for both capabilities. And on that quickly, you know, you've obviously positioned this very well for the work fleets because that's really the heart of, I'll say North America, because us can, uh, Canuckle heads up here, you know, SUVs and pickups are the number one vehicles that we're buying in Canada as well. So 
it is a lot of lot of use cases for pickup trucks and work fleets. Um, how are you reimagining what they're going to look at this truck like? Uh, we've know. actually partnered with them on quite a few mm -hmm. um, things when we talked about the work truck. So uh, we've gotten specific feedback from work truck customers in terms of fleet and retail owners because the work truck is not just a fleet ownership um, uh, opportunity for our customers. And um, a couple of the things that we've done, we've talked about the frunk space and how that has an opportunity to have locked um, safe storage that is out of sight versus like a toolbox in the back of the pickup right. bed that traditionally uh, the work truck owners have used. We also talk about um, cost of ownership. You know, the work truck and fleet customers are very interested in a lower cost of ownership overall. You can see the um, differences in the design between the work truck and the RST in the reveal footage. And that's really done purposely because we we understand that they're going to be, you know, look, using that frunk more as an example. And so rubbing up against a painted surface isn't the best where we put molding color in places where, you know, we know that those workers and those owners are going to be in the, you know, interfacing more to the vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, 400 miles of range, we have 10.2 kilowatts of offboard charge capability. Mm -hmm. And so originally we felt that the um, work truck owners might not want a 400 mile range truck to begin with. And what we actually found was they were very interested. Number one, some of them do want that 400 mile of range capability. But the other thing that they want is the capability to um, charge uh, tools and other equipment at their job sites. Mm -hmm. And so they actually want to be able to use that 400 mile range pack to their benefit. And so it really allows us to broaden our customer base with our work truck because they can either choose to drive 400 miles or they can choose to drive a couple hundred miles and use some battery for um, charging their job site. And also they can even charge another vehicle. So if they have a fleet of work trucks and they wanna do some things on a job site to mm -hmm. get people to different areas, they can still even do vehicle to vehicle charging. And that vehicle to vehicle charging is any EV. It's not just the Silverado to Silverado. So that provides quite a bit of benefit for some owners that might wanna be you know, charge helpers to other owners that are, that are out there as well. Yeah, that VTA, I guess any is is now becoming much much more of an acronym than some of the others. Absolutely, the, vers the versatility, like you said, is there for the work and for the fleet owners as well. We're going to have to come up with a new name of tailgate parties with the frunk with the big uh, trunk. I don't know how we're going to call that. Maybe you guys We've can. We've got frunk uh, gates. That's frunk a, gates. That's is that is, is that, that what they're going to call wall? it? Frunk gates. Yep. Okay, I like that's that. That's what we're calling it. And I like it. It's really because we tried to envision like what would people be doing at their yep. frunk. We have power outlets in the frunk as well as the back because you know yep. you can have a party at any part of your truck now. Not that I would put a keg in there, but you could. But I'm just saying. Anyway, I, I cannot I know confirm that I would ever do that. <laughs> it, it cannot confirm or deny. Um, I want to just quickly in, in time, just kind of wrap it up by saying, you know, what are, what are, in your opinion, some of the, the major differentiators versus some of the other guys on the marketplace? And, um, you know, what, uh, when do you really feel confident that you'll start be, being able to get some really good quantities from a production capability on these trucks? I'm not asking necessarily for numbers or an exact time frame, but just so consumers uh, have an idea. Obviously, the RST was sold out in 12 minutes in the U.S., um, short, not, not a lot much more time after that here in Canada, you know, at 105,000 us, I believe it was and 120 Canadian. That's phenomenal. Um, so maybe those two questions we can finish up on. Yeah. So let's start with, um, just overall what we see in the lineup, um, mm -hmm. in the CES reveal, Mary talked about our trail boss also coming out. The work truck we've talked about being um, available for fleet ownership first, but it is a retail truck. It will be available in the future. And so any customer right now can go to Chevrolet.com and reserve their vehicle today. That vehicle ranges from $39,000 to the $105,000 truck. The R loaded every option that we can think of to provide the customers the most flexibility, the most capability comes in that $105,000 truck. There will be a truck for the consumer that wants to choose it. And that's really where those reservations are right now. Um, we've got other configurations and models that will be coming out in the future. And the Ultium platform, as well as our factory zero um, assembly plant are really where we enable the opportunity to increase our volume and meet our customer demands. 
Um, yesterday, it was announced that we have a second plant coming online, mm -hmm. and that gives a little bit of opportunity to hear our customers to hear that we are going to meet the demand that they desire, and we're very capable of meeting um, high quantities of vehicles. And I actually think that there were some production numbers in terms of maximums that were included in that second plant announcement. So mm -hmm. General Motors is very serious about growing sustainability in our future. Um, Mary has been very clear, as have we, that we are going to have our future become electric, and we are ready to um, provide a no excuses vehicle to the customers. This truck wins on range over the competitors. It wins on integrated feel, and it gives customers more than what they would get if we had simply decided to take our current body on frame truck, throw some batteries underneath it, and call it an EV pickup. We're giving them the 400 miles of range because we've developed that Altium platform to bring in more modules. It's a 24 module pack at the launch. And I am very proud of the fact that we have the mid gate, the increased mm -hmm. cabin volume of 511 bed, 10.2 kilowatts of offboards, uh, offboard power. I mean, anyone will find something that they love about this truck. And I think they'll find everything that they love about this truck. And I'm just excited that we'll be able to meet that demand and we'll be able to keep up with our customers. And, you know, and I truly believe that GM will do it. You guys have put your mind to it and, and a lot of money behind this as well to be yeah. able to move into that electrification realm at a very hurried pace. I want to thank uh, Nicole Kratz again, chief engineer for Chevrolet battery electric trucks based in Michigan, I believe, right? You're down there. Not too far away from, I'm just outside Toronto, so we're not that far oh, away. Oh, perfect. Been yeah. there a few times. Great. Well, you're always welcome. And I look forward to eventually seeing one of these. Uh, we we're hoping we we're hoping to see some in the Toronto show, but it's not happening. So maybe mm -hmm. at Detroit this year, you know, as things get rescheduled, where, and then maybe eventually uh, having a press drive at some point later in the year or next year when they come out. Wish you guys all the best of luck. Thank you very much for taking the time. This was very informative. And uh, I encourage viewers again to check out gm.com, gm.ca as well uh, for the Canadian stuff and uh, get more information that we've talked about today. Thanks very much, Nicole. Thanks for having me. You're quite welcome.